good evening. Glad that you could be here with us virtually through uh, Facebook. Uh, earlier this week, I uh, went to the grocery store, went down the baking needs aisle, and noticed one shelf area, one section was just completely bare. And when I went over to figure out what was missing, it was all the flour. All the flour was gone. Then I remembered it was Mother's Day and people were out buying their mom's favorite flour, which must be Pillsbury all-purpose flour. And, um, you know, during this pandemic, there have been things that are missing at the grocery stores from time to time. And uh, sometimes we have to find the things that we saved in the freezer or in the, uh, in the back of the uh, pantry. Or with the restaurants closed, maybe there's a place that we like to go eat and we're just kind of missing that. In the psalm that we've been looking at, Psalm 63, it's David's on the run, probably from Absalom. Uh, we've looked at the part where he's thirsty, he's out in the desert, he's thirsty, but he's also hungry. And tonight's passage, when we get to the verses, we're going to be looking at just one verse and it's uh, food related. So if you have your Bibles, I could open up to Psalm 63, and I'll be reading out of the uh, English Standard Version. O God, you are my God. Earnestly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you. As in a dry and weary land where there is no water. So I have looked upon you in the sanctuary, beholding your power and glory, because your steadfast love is better than life. My lips will praise you. So I will bless you as long as I live. In your name I will lift up my hands. Now here's the passage for tonight. My soul will be satisfied as with fat and rich food. And my mouth will praise you with joyful lips. When I remember you upon my bed and meditate on you in the watches of the night. For you have been my help. And in the shadow of your wings I will sing for joy. My soul clings to you. Your night, your right hand upholds me. Now I just look at verse five very briefly tonight, talking about let my soul be satisfied as with fat and rich food, and my mouth will praise you with joyful lips. You know, when you think of family meals, when you get a whole family together, like Thanksgiving or Christmas time or Easter time, normal Easter times, you know, what do we do? Uh, we gather around a table, and we eat, and we eat some more, and we eat even more. You had Thanksgiving, you had the turkey, you had the cranberry sauce, the stuffing, the mashed potatoes, the sweet potato casserole, uh, the green bean uh, casserole, uh, bread, butter, jelly, I, and it just goes on and on. And we sit there and we eat until we're satisfied, and we eat until we're full. And then we continue eating until we're stopped. And what happens after that is we lean back from the table and we kind of put our hand on the stomach, our stomach and go, wow, I ate way too much. And then we said, but boy, wasn't that good? Oh, everything tasted good. Oh, oh, the turkey was great. Oh, and the gravy and the mashed potato. Oh, but that sweet potato uh, casserole. You know, we talk about what a wonderful meal it is. And so David is likening that to remembering those times of, of God's blessings in his life and God's presence in his presence in his life, and and when he remembers those things and he's he's dwelling on God's filling presence, he's he can't help but to say what a wonderful experience it is, what a wonderful God you are, God, and he's praising him, and that's what we want to do this evening. In just a little bit and give you opportunity when they uh, play and sing again we'll give you an opportunity just as we normally do to list your praises and when we pray in just a moment you'll have an opportunity to list your prayer requests and before I do that just a couple things uh, you probably have heard a little bit maybe uh, Governor Hogan's uh, talking about what can start up this weekend. And one of the things that he stated was if the numbers of COVID cases continue on the same projection, uh, by Friday evening, uh, some of the restrictions will be lifted. So churches can go back on Sunday at 50% capacity. 
we will probably not do that. We want to make sure things are safe for people. So don't expect uh, on-campus services for this Sunday. And I'll just say that for a couple reasons. One, we want to make sure the cases are going down. Two, we want to see what the county executive says in response to that, because he might say, no, we're going to keep them in place for Baltimore County, and we don't want to be rushing around. And the other thing is we have protocols that we're putting in place. Uh, we know what they are, but we need to make sure our physical campus is ready to have people because we want to keep folks safe. So you'll be hearing about those protocols. We'll be sending things out uh, to you and letting folks know exactly uh, when we will gather again probably the following week we'll see we'll just play this uh, by ear and we just thank you for your your flexibility and your your uh, patience as we navigate this but it is with your safety that we have this in in mind and uh, it, most of you probably already know that our dear friend joe sakura passed uh, from complications of covid 19 uh, there'll be a small family gathering at the graveside tomorrow, and uh, we just want you to lift up this family. Joe was such a great guy and such a gen generous man and, uh, in every way. And um, so, you know, maybe even as we're praying or when we're praising, let's do it when we're praising. Uh, maybe there's something about Joe that you'd like to share. We would love for you to do that. So when they're singing, Maybe some of the praises that you can share is just tell them something that you appreciated about Joe. Or you know, maybe a little, you know, one sentence, two sentence, three sentence uh, statement about an encounter that you had where God just blessed you through him. And uh, that would just kind of warm, you know, the people up and just remind us that, that uh, you know, we were so blessed to have him in our presence. And as Christ followers, we believe that life continues on that life is greater than death, and that you know, Joe uh, is actually doing pretty well right now. And that uh, we can celebrate that even in our grief. Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Uh, Father God, we do thank you for Joe and ask that you would uh, just surround his family, Jeff and his family, and Janet, and, and, uh, and just, just help them through this process. Uh, you know, a pandemic, rehab uh, with Jana, Jeffrey moving uh, from Alaska back to the East Coast. Any of those things are difficult. And so uh, put them all together with a pandemic. Oh, wow. Uh, so we just want to pray for them and ask that you would just guide every step. And, and, and God, we just pray that, um, that as we continue to minister to people around us, that we, uh, that, you know, as we are starting to be able to do a little bit more, let us not be reckless. Uh, let us be uh, confident in your presence. Let us be safe and show that people around us that we're not only concerned about our own health, but more importantly, we're concerned about their health too. We continue to pray for our leaders, our medical folks as they deal with this. Uh, COVID-19, that you would help them to understand uh, what is happening and to be able to uh, find answers and, and help us to get back to normal. We pray that uh, we will be mindful to those that are around us to be, uh, to be encouragers to them, uh, that we would always seek to be kind and uplifting and positive in all that we do, so that we would actually demonstrate that we trust in you and that we praise you and we pray this in Christ's name amen so they're going to sing and play and if you have a praise love to hear it maybe there's something that you like to share about Joe uh, please take time and let us see that also thank you for being here tonight